What's up, everyone? Thanks for joining me on another one. Thought I heard a bug flying around in here. Uh, thanks for joining me for another one. Uh, we are back doing another mod to the ZR2. Uh, it's all the way back there right now. Um, show you what we're doing. It's a little complicated. So this mod right here is upper control arms. It's from Peak Suspension. It's their design, I guess. They, there might be like another, I guess, proprietary design on the, on these upper control arms. And if you have been watching the channel, you will notice, you will know that I did just change the upper control arms on the truck to the GM high angle ones. Had a little issue with those. So the issue I was having uh, when we went off-roading, it almost sounded like my coil was binding the, the front passenger side. No big deal, it's just the coil, whatever. Um, then eventually realized when I, when I was changing the CV boot for the driver's side, went and checked everything on the driver's side again. It was still, I was getting like a popping noise. And from what I noticed, the bolt was moving in the knuckle a little bit. And that was giving me the, the popping noise. So tried to tighten it. Bolt didn't really seem like it was getting much tighter. Uh, eventually I cut a washer. I cut the end of a wash, like the side of a washer off to make it into like a U shape, jammed it in there. Just to, I guess, give like a little extra length before the bolt, the nut possibly bottoms out on the, like the shoulder of the joint. I can't, I can't think of the word right now, but before, let me, let me show you. The thing. It was, so I was having problems with it. Uh, eventually I couldn't get it any tighter and the bolt just started spinning. And then this is what happened with it. Threads. Threads are completely destroyed. Um, the nut isn't looking much better. This was actually me trying to re-thread it with a, a tap and die, but I do have a really bad tap and die set. But threads are a little, a little messed. I actually pressed that one out, and then I took the one of the joints from my old, from the OEM arms, threw those in because I actually thought there was a different design on the whole upper control arm itself. Guess what? Control arms is the same exact thing. The only difference is that that CV joint. So the main difference is actually the ball joint itself. So that one has more articulation than the stock one. Put the stock one in, truck's making tons of noise on the passenger side. Just been dealing with it for a little while. Wound up deciding, hey, let me just order the peak arms. In the meantime, I'm gonna try to source another ball joint and then possibly just sell those arms. We'll see. So sourcing the ball joint has been a little bit of an issue so far. That's why I decided let me just get these peak arms completely not deal with it ever, I guess ever again. These do have the delta joint, the uniball joint. They're, they do sell an upgrade, which is the, the that you can get on the arms already installed. And if you don't get them installed, you could always buy them afterwards. So that's what we're going to do if I ever, if these things ever get messed up. I am northeast. So there's a good chance in a little while these, I will have like some crunching or whatever with these joints. Like I said, I can upgrade eventually, but those joints were back ordered. I actually waited like, I waited two weeks, messaged them and they were saying where they get the ball joints form, from, said they were back ordered three to four weeks, then another two weeks. So I decided just send me these so I could stop dealing with that and have a truck that doesn't sound like it's gonna, the wheel's gonna fall off. Now that we got that all out of the way, let's take a look at the arms. So obviously, driver's side, got a cool peak suspension sticker. These are the bushings. Um, this is the bolt that's gonna go through on the knuckle now. Got a bunch of grease for it. That's how they look. So let's get this car up in the air and start changing them. There's a little clearance thing I'm gonna have to do on a couple tabs. I think you gotta uh, cut off uh, a droop stop and then a little corner of the brake line tab. I think that holds it in. There's instructions online. We'll look at them. We'll take a, another quick peek through them. And I think you gotta drill something out too. Not a big deal. By the way, this weather is amazing. It is November and it's 70 degrees out today. Now the passenger side, I might struggle a little bit getting the upper control arm off because that ball joint was giving me a little trouble putting it on. So I might start with that one, get that one out of the way. Let me see if we could make the make it pop for you. That. Well, you heard it. That.
my hands are a mess, but that took probably about 10 minutes total. Not too bad. I mean, I have taken this stuff apart a few times recently. That's why it makes it a little bit easier for me, but got to figure out what I got to cut for the other arm, so I might put them in just to figure out. Um, pretty sure I got to do a little clearancing here, like just make a little notch. Um, I think this has to get cut, and then something with the brake break bracket. This is installed, well the passenger side is installed at least. Take a look at what, I guess we'll, I'll show you what it looks like and then I just gotta do the other side. So that's installed, I'll probably get a better view on the other side, but um, tab was back here, that's the droop stop tab is over there. I had to cut a little piece of the um, brake tab off and then Radius this over here a little bit. I'm um, not too sure if I radius it enough. Oh, underneath here, I'm not too sure if I radius it enough, but um, the jack isn't under the, the wheel right now and it should be at full droop at the moment. So, shouldn't have to worry about that too much. But let's throw the wheel back on and do the other side. Other side, I just gotta put back together. Uh, let's take a quick look at it since you can probably get a better view. Um, so, you clearance this a little bit. You to cut this tab off over here, and then you gotta cut a little bit of the brake, brake line tab. There it is. Arms right there, so it's still ready to go in. So I'm just gonna slap this in. Shock back in, and then we're So, obviously, uh, as you can see, it's done. Truck's back on the ground. Took it for a test drive around the block. No clocking at the moment, so uh, pretty excited about that. Put it like right there. I know I say this just about every single time, but uh, pretty simple, pretty easy mod to do. Need some power tools. It's, uh, well, I guess it's simple, but uh, it's a little more in depth and uh, a little step above the normal since you gotta cut some brackets off. But other than that, it's really not bad. I took I took my time doing this. Um, took about three hours from start to finish. If I was actually like trying to get it done, you could probably do it two, two to two and a half hours. But like I said, I was taking my time. Not trying to kill myself today, and uh, it is what it is. I was gonna raise the suspension up since I do have the the coilover conversion. I was gonna raise it up, but I decided I'm just gonna leave it for now. Um, it says in the instructions to get an alignment after you do this install, but I'm going to wait it out a little bit because, um, actually, one second. So it's been about one, two, three, four, five weeks so far uh, since I made an order on uh, King's, the King's front suspension, the front shocks and all that stuff. So uh, I'm going to wait gonna try to wait it out with the alignment until those come uh, I think it's about 8 to 11 weeks so we'll see how we go with the trips probably not gonna take too long of trips with it without the alignment like this but uh, hopefully another like three weeks suspension comes then I'm gonna put that on let make sure the trucks nice and level now then make sure the trucks nice and level then I'll go get an alignment and we're done thanks for joining me I didn't I know I didn't film too too much but there is an install that but there is install in, in there is install instructions, <laughs> there we go, on Peak Suspension's website. When you go check out these, the product on their website, the bottom install stuff, so just follow along with that. Pretty easy, you saw which tabs you had to grind down and, and whatnot. Remember to paint that, you don't want any bare metal to rust and that's on basically tabs on your frame, so you don't want that to rust because frame rust is really bad.
now we're just waiting for the King suspension and then kind of done. Just going to wait it out for wheels and tires at some point. I will see you guys on the next one. Subscribe for truck mods. I do have a uh, 240 right here. If you go check out one of my last videos, uh, key broke, I was stranded head to toe at home, so we're gonna have to fix, figure out how to fix that. But join along, subscribe, like, comment, and all that good stuff, and I will see you soon. Peace. I know I didn't film too too much, but there is an install, but there is install, in, but there is install, in, I can't say that word. There is install, there is install instructions, <laughs> there we go.